hey i want to be a software developer okay then go ahead but i don't know which are the most important coding patterns oh really don't worry the runtime error has brought you the most important coding patterns that one must do before applying to any product based companies i can guarantee you 100% that if you do these important coding patterns you will be done with nearly 70% of your work so i request you to watch this video till end so that you can come to know the most important coding patterns so without wasting times let's get started so the first algorithm is sliding window algorithm so this sliding window algorithm is basically used to have the operation on input data in a specific window size now this sliding window algorithm is classified into two types as i have mentioned over here that it can be of fixed window size or it can be of variable window size so what does a fixed window size says that if you are given an array say for example this one my window size is fixed so every time you move on you have to be in this mode only because this is my original window size so depending on this fixed window size there are number of problems might you find for example you might need to find the window of size k where we get a maximum sum or we might need to find the say for example here we have given a window and we need to find the maximum sum of this particular window so these are the problems which are the sample problems from the fixed window size second category of the sliding window comes that is a variable window size where the size of the window is not fixed it can increase or it can decrease as well depending upon the requirement of your problem so if you talk about the problems depending upon the variable window size there might be a questions like we need to find the window size whose sum is equal to 0 or we need to find the size of window size whose sum is greater than or equal to given sum so these are the sample problems on variable window size so this is one of the must do sliding window algorithm technique for the important coding patterns and the most interesting point that is which are the data structures which can be used to solve the sliding window we can use an array it can be used in string and it can also use hash table in order to implement the sliding window so i hope so you understood this sliding window algorithm clearly so our second algorithm is fast and slow pointer so what does this fast and slow pointer means say for example we got a data structure called as an array and there are the two pointers one is pointing over here and one is pointing over here let's say called as s1 and s2 now say for example what is happening is so s1 gets over here and s2 is getting over here so what does it mean is both the pointers are running at the same speed that is both are moving one one stage ahead one stage ahead which means every single pointer that is s1 and s2 are of same speed but what does this fast and slow pointer says that the two pointers s1 and s2 will move at a different speed which means s1 can move two steps ahead or s1 can move one step ahead there is no any formalities or uniformities in between both the pointers so the question comes where we can use a fast and the slow pointer so basically everyone might have come across the question to find the mid of the link list so what we basically do is say for example this is my link list and we got a two pointers this is called as a slow and this one was called as a fast so we are moving this slow pointers by one step and we are moving this fast pointer by two steps so my yes comes over here and my fast come over here and since my fast has reached at the end so what i will do is so what i will do is i will simply return my position of slow pointer because this is considered as a mid of my link list so this is how we use a fast and slow pointers and believe me believe me 70% of the link list problems are basically solved with the help of the fast and slow pointers because we might find number of questions like find the middle element of the link list check whether the link list is circular or not so there are many questions that can be solved using the fast and slow pointers so these fast and slow pointers can be applied on array strings or link list depending upon the requirement or the output what does the questions wants so i hope so you understood this fast and slow pointer techniques so the next one is breadth for search and depth for search i can guarantee you these are the most important two algorithms because most of the tree and the graph question can be solved using the breadth for search and the depth for search believe me you don't need to think much about tree and graph questions because if you come across the tree and the graph question first always think about these two algorithms just we need a slight modification if you have that slight modification i can guarantee you about 90% of the tree and the graph problems can be solved using breadth for search and depth for search because say for example we got a tree and what we need to find is we need to find the nodes which are at a particular distance say for the distance k from a root node right this is my root node so i need to find the nodes which are at the distance of k from my root so what i need i simply need a breadth for search because this is my level 0 this is my level 1 this is my level 2 level 3 and level 4 so i am and simply i need to traverse by level by level and which algorithm is used to traverse level by level of course bfs so it can be used to traverse level by level 
so similarly say for example these are my two graphs which are disconnected right these are two my disconnected graphs and we need to find how many components are there so this is my first component and this is my second component so which algorithm i can use for sure i can use either bfs or either i can use a dfs so both algorithms can be used to check out how many number of connected components are there and that's the reason why I always tell that is BFS and DFS are the most two important algorithm because tree and graph both are the two important topics in data structures and it must be done and without the BFS and DFS we cannot solve the questions related to the tree and the graph because about 90% as I mentioned earlier that 90% of the question of the tree and the graph can be solved on this because simply we need simply slight modification depending upon the output which we want so this is the reason why I always say the breadth first search and depth first search these are the must do algorithms it can be uploaded on tree graph matrix so matrix is nothing but it is simply the implementation of graph itself because there might be a questions like you are given a matrix and we need to find the number of ones in the matrix which are in a continuous way so again we can use a depth first search over here so that's the reason why i always say breadth first search and depth first search has a wide range of applications has a wide range of applications so these are the must do algorithms so i hope so you understood the meaning and the application of depth first search and depth first search so the next algorithm is a subset so basically this subset is totally depend upon the subsequence so what does the subsequence says that say for example if i had one two and three so i can have one and three i can have one and two i can have two and three or i can have one or i can have just two or i can have just three just make sure that my order is same i haven't changed order which means i cannot have two and one because we are changing the order in order to get the subsequence what we need is we need to keep the order as it is but only thing is we can delete one or some elements in between of them so this is what we call as a subsequence so subset is nothing but is also the subsequence and what options we get in subsequence we got two options that whether to pick this or don't pick this pick this don't pick this so if you're getting an option for every single elements what we have we have the recursion and we need to carry out all possible choices for every single element so we need to use a recursion to solve this subsequence or subset problems but the point is if in case if you have the overlapping sub problems we can use a dp to optimize algorithm so i can say that the subset is the most important one because there might be a questions where we ask to find the permutations and combination of that string or array or the queue which you have mentioned over here so we need to go with thorough with the subset most interesting point that is in order to be a strong in subset we need to be a strong in recursion because i don't think so that the subsequence and the subset problems can be solved without recursion so that we can carry out all possible choices because whenever we have the option for the choices one thing we need only recursion without recursion we cannot get all possible choices for every single element so i hope so you understood the meaning and the importance of sub subset so our next algorithm is top k element so let's understand what does this top k element is say for example i have given an array they have asked to find the third largest elements what they have asked to find the third largest elements so what we can do i can simply sort this array like as 2 3 4 6 and 7 so i need a third largest which would be 4 so 4 would be answered because my 7 is my first largest 6 is my second largest and 4 is my third largest so while simply sort the array and i will traverse one by one till i get to come across the third largest element so these are the time consuming algorithms so what does the top k element says that we can be implemented using the priority queue we can using the priority queue because priority queue is basically used to implement the heap itself so what does heap says that heap basically base of two types that is called as a min heap or second one is called as a max heap i know as everyone is aware about so in min heap always the first the minimum elements are always there and in max heap the maximum elements are always there so simply what I will do is I will simply put all the elements in my max heap. So it would be 7, 6, 4, 3 and 2 itself. So I'll go on popping till my come across the third largest. So this is my first, this is my second and now I come across the fourth. So I will simply return my four element. So this is how the basically top K algorithms are basically used. Most interestingly, it can be used to solve the priority queues because here they have asked to find the third largest element. They might ask you to find the third smallest element. So if they ask you to find the smallest element, which heap will, will you use? Minimum heap will you use because here in max heap, we always get the maximum element first. So in min heap, we always get the minimum element first. 
and most interesting point here is the these top k elements has a wide range of applications because it can be used in disaster algorithm in graph it can be used in minimum spanning tree or maximum spanning tree because in minimum spanning tree what we need to ask we need to find the minimum weight and in disaster algorithm we need the shortest distance right we need the shortest distance so these are the wide applications of top k elements because it is directly depending upon the heap and heap plays a major role implementing disaster algorithms minimum spanning tree cyclic sort topological sort so these are the most important algorithm i can guess for so i hope so you understood the top elements now let's move to our new algorithm and now our final two algorithm that is zero one knapsack problems and longest common substring believe me these are the standard problems so these are the standard problems of dp and without this you cannot understand the basic concepts of dp so i can guarantee you zero one knapsack problems and longest common subsequence these are the most important algorithm to kick start your dp journey because this is basically applied on strings and this is applied basically on subsequence and as we discussed earlier that in order to calculate the subsequence what we need is we need a recursion and if there is overlapping sub problems what we need is we need a dp so, so zero one knapsack problems and longest common substring are the most important part to start with the dp journey 